OK, so where do we find these different types of asteroids? So we've got a diagram here of distance from the Sun. Now, the Earth is, by definition, one AU as astronomical units. So the Earth's about here. Mars is about, what, 1.5, 1.6. So yep. it's around here somewhere. And what we can Jupiter's see, kind of somewhere over here. So out at about five astronomical yeah. units. Saturn's out at 10. Um, so they definitely, and, and this also used to be the picture that we thought of 30 years ago, and a lot has changed in 30 years, where we thought some of these types, the C types, the most common dark carbonous chondrites, were in, maybe in the main part of the asteroid belt peaking here. And as you can see here, about 50% were about 3 AU, three times the distance of the sun. Yeah. So these are the various rare types. I mean, the ones we're really interested in the M types, and they're yeah. out about here, which is a bit closer than some. Which so is... a, a bit closer, but still further than Mars. Yep. I mean, the C types, these rare types might be the ones that have some organics and, and they're further out. So if you wanted to get water, ice, or more That's right. hydrocarbons, those would be the ones to go for. Close, and it's mostly the stony types. Yes. Uh, not so useful. The metal ones, though, out about you know, twice the distance of Mars from the sun. So Not bad, not good. But, and they're also, as you said before, a lot less than, say, the C types and S types. But we've studied quite a bit more about them, and we've learned a little bit more, and it's a little bit messier than we imagined, yeah. Paul. So as we talk about at great length in the planets part of the course, um, if you look in much more detail at the orbits of the asteroids, you get a diagram like this. Um, and what you can see is there are actually multiple asteroid belts with yes. gaps in them. And these are all caused by resonant orbits, mostly from Jupiter. Yep. So uh, Jupiter's gravity has removed them. You should mention that while there are tens of millions of asteroids out there. If you were standing on a typical asteroid, it's not like Star Wars, yes. where there's another asteroid here, another one there. You probably, from one asteroid, can't even see anymore. Yeah. If you can, it would be a very distant dot drifting past a long way apart. So this is actually a lot of asteroids, but there's also a lot of empty space. Exactly. You know, we have to think about it. We're much further out than the orbit of Mars. There's just a lot more area to go around. Yeah. And even though you have lots of them, they still don't accumulate to make more than even Ceres, the, or, or, you know, the moon. Yeah. So they don't make up that much volume. Yes, yeah, so there's not much volume. Also, they're puffed out a bit, like all the planets that we talked about in the planets are in a flat disk, very, yeah. very close. Um, but the asteroids are actually pumped up by about 30 degrees either side of this. So it's not as if you can go over under the asteroid belt. The asteroid belt is enormously thick. And you've got this whole series of different uh, areas. And again, the different sorts of asteroids are found in different types. So you've got the different... Um, so we have our C types in the, in the blue. Uh, those S types, the stony ones, stony ones to the orange. And as we keep talking about these M ones, the green ones, the ones that we really like, well, they're kind of sort of... This is a log scale, so it looks like not much less than something else, but yeah. that's actually you ten times less. Yes, ten times less. So they're actually a lot less, but as you're clear in pointing out, much, much closer relative to some of these other types and some of these other bands. Trojans being these ones that um, hang around Jupiter, um, so, okay, they are there. The metal ones that we care about, eh, decent numbers. We still don't know a lot about where they are, as we so we didn't have great images of where them, so we haven't really visited them. But as you said quite early on, they're also small, and small means, well, probably not that hard or difficult to get to or from. Yes, yeah, so we've still got to climb out of the Earth's orbit and then make our way up. This is out to Mars. We're going even further. So we need a lot of energy to get out to the asteroid belt uh, if they are in the main belt. Yes. There are a few of these asteroids, again, to be talked about in the planets part of the course, which are, have been scattered into closer orbits. These are the ones that might kill us on Earth. And so those would be the easiest ones because they might be down here if we can catch them. And those Earth-crossing ones are ones that are kind of becoming quite interesting because you don't have to make this huge trek out to here again, this is an AU, so you know, these two or three ones are way off screen. Um, if they're coming to you, great. But the problem is, we haven't found many M types, if any, that cross the path of the Earth yet. Okay, so we need to get up. I mean, getting back on the then is much easier because these things have almost a lump of rock in space, there's very little gravity. I mean, it's smaller than the moon, which is that moon's that little blip. So if you get one of these ones that you're a kilometre or something across, a, um, a cubic kilometre of um, minerals is still very welcome, but you could actually jump off the surface. Yeah. yeah, a human could do a standing jump and go into orbit around these things. You don't need a rocket to get off. And that's kind of the, the that's what starts to make this viable is, okay, it's going to take effort to get there, but we're going to have to do that to Mars. 
So the technology or the effort or the ideas, we have to solve that getting to Mars anyway. So if we go a little bit further, okay, sure. But once we get there, yeah, sure, we can come back and we're not bringing humans on them, so we don't have to worry about how safely we really get back. We don't really care if this thing crashes with all our minerals. We just want it back. It doesn't crash on top of me. Well, that's true, yeah. <laughs> so we think, even though they may be quite past the orbit of Mars, that, all right, it's probably okay to get there. And at least once we're there, we need essentially no energy, very, very little energy, relatively speaking, to get, get off back, the to get off the asteroid. You still need enough to slow your orbit down to bring it back that's to right. the Earth. So it starts to make it a little bit more viable. Okay.